Hi, I'm Dave Abrams. And I'm Kristen Lagana. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. In this week's episode, we'll visit Old Mill Football Training Camp and tell you about how to volunteer in the community. But first, making headlines this week. We've all been pulling for Governor Larry Hogan as he fights non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Well, this week, the Edgewater and Annapolis resident who won the top job in the state reported that 95% of his cancer is gone. Hogan told the Washington Post that he aced his test, which involved aggressive chemotherapy treatments. Since announcing his diagnosis in June, Hogan has spent five days in a row at the University of Maryland Medical Center every three weeks. The governor was diagnosed with stage three, which is very serious. He had more than 60 tumors and reports that his doctors are surprised by his great results from treatment. The chemo will continue next Friday. We here at Week in Review want to wish the governor all the best for a full recovery and we'll be pulling for him as he undergoes three more rounds of chemotherapy. Hogan Strong is a good slogan because the governor admitted the treatments hurt like hell. Great news for Governor Hogan. Absolutely. And uh, 95%. Yeah, it's, it's and he looks great. He does look great. You like the the bald look? It's working I think for he you. Looks great. Yeah, yeah, he does look great, and it, it's it, unless you've experienced that or or you know someone who's experienced that, you don't really get the level of. I mean, he's putting on a strong face out there. It's and a he's, very draining situation, and the fact that he's up there with the biggest smile he can muster and ninety five percent. That's just it's amazing. Yeah, and I mean, so he's we definitely wish you all the best. Absolutely, and uh, and and luckily he has some of the best doctors in the world. Um, we're we're blessed in this area to have so many great um, hospitals, Johns Hopkins and University of Maryland. Um, so we'll be pulling for him, and and we'll be sure to you know let people know how he's doing and how he progresses. I'll keep you updated. Well, Kristen, I'm feeling hungry. Are you <laughs> are you feeling hungry? What kind of question is that? Aren't we always talking about food on this show, Dave? <laughs> yeah, I'm a, little, I'm a little hungry. All right. Well, you might remember that I told you a few weeks ago on the show we would have a big announcement about Odenton Town Center, but I was sworn to secrecy. Oh, wait, is this about the name of the community? Yeah, it, no, they're not naming it Kristen. Oh. And we're not traveling to Kristen. Okay. There's no Kristen involved, but it's still good news. It's okay. still good news. Okay. Because now we can tell the world. All right. Uh, it's been terrible for me to have to stay quiet about this, but... The West County Chamber of Commerce announced online that Ruth's Chris Steakhouse will open at in the spring at the Village of Odenton Station. Ooh. Yes. Wow. So if you're keeping track at home and you've been watching Week in Review, yes. that's now two solid draws to the town center with Giant announcing plans to locate there as well. Local business leaders are very excited by the news because they say there has been a perception to date that the town center was not ready to break out. Well, now things appear to be moving. I, I have to admit, I've never been to Ruth Chris Steakhouse. Really? So maybe it's good. With the um, ongoing discussion of a burrito war talk, we can do a Ruth Chris. Steakhouse. Now, Kristen, <laughs> Ruth Chris is a little more expensive. <laughs> it's a little bit expensive. I've heard they have amazing potatoes. They do. They the, Ruth Chris is very nice and. And actually, uh, yesterday I was driving through Annapolis Town Center, which is right. which is a pretty good model, I think, I for love a successful the town, center. town center. Right. And what do you see when you drive through there? You see restaurant after restaurant. Mm -hmm. And um, the anchors. You got Gordon Beers. Uh, yep. Whole and you Foods. Got Target and Whole Foods. Target. 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 Right. For for the the higher society people watching the show yes. right now, it's Target. Yes. Um, but that's really the key, and, and everywhere I go where I'm talking to people about Indian Town Center, they talk about you, you have to have those anchors there first, and then the rest of it comes in around it. Sure. And, and, and honestly, it's, it's a different kind of town center because, I mean, Watch Chapel is right there. So you're not gonna you're not gonna duplicate or take away from what Watch Chapel has. It's a big place, it's got a lot of retail, so. But you uh, do see some common suspects in town centers. You, yes. you get what I'm saying? Yes. Like, you, what are some of the more common businesses you think you've seen in town centers that are either existing or, or being under construction? What are some of the things you know they have to have at a town center? Are you talking about Chipotle? No, I'm not. Hot I wasn't even thinking about food. I was thinking about some of the things that like, I routinely see. Like types of places that they have? Sort of businesses that you know you have to have at a town center. You have to have uh, um, the frozen yogurt place. Frozen yogurt, absolutely. Gotta have that. Gotta have that. A nail salon. Absolutely. Because you never know when you need to get your nails done. While eating frozen yogurt, of course. It's all about... Can you do both? 
Yes. At the same time? Multitasking. That's what town centers are all about. A laundromat. You got to drop that stuff off before the nail appointment and getting your frozen yogurt. Oh. And that's what, that's what it I is. It's it. about convenience. So now I'm, I'm curious it. to see what else comes in Odenton Town Center. I think it's going to be good. But Ruth Chris, that's great. I think we're getting there. Yeah. Well, Dave, there's another ominous sign that summer is almost over. No! Boo. Kids will report back to school this week. That's right, kids. No snow days for a while. On Monday, you will board the bus, and your parents will breathe a big sigh of relief. Now, some children need help to make sure they are ready to learn, and the community steps up big time. Earlier this summer, we told you about the back-to-school program sponsored by the Anne Arundel County Department of Social Services. It looks like coordinator Tanya Steele, who has been a guest on this program, is going to break all the records this year. The program has been around for 25 years, and this year it provides backpacks and school supplies for almost 4,000 students. We'd like to think that maybe her uh, you know, parents on the show might have had a little something to do with that. Didn't you say, Dave? Well, it's funny you say parents because we should say congratulations to Tanya, who had a baby just oh, yesterday, I believe. Parents, I see you're playing a. a see what I did there? I, I got it. I like it. So, congratulations awesome. to Tanya. Congrats, she does Tanya. a great job. We've had Yay. her on the show a couple times. Do you know if it was a girl or a boy? I have not gotten the details yet. Oh, okay. Well, congratulations anyway to the Steels and the, on your new little bundle. The card's in the mail, Kristen. Got it. Okay. Got it. Well, to partake in the joy, go over and like the Anne Arundel County Department of Social Services on Facebook. They are posting photos all week as the supplies are delivered to the children. Back to school. You know, it doesn't matter how old I get when it's around this time of year. I still get that kind of like butterfly in my stomach about that going back to school. Yeah. Um, no. No? No, not really. Um, it means it's going to take me longer to get to work in the morning. Oh, <laughs> you're such a big advance. I get excited. I think of college, moving back to college. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, that was cool. Yeah. Actually, it made me think about Trapper Keepers. Trapper Keepers? Remember Trapper Keepers? Do they still yes, have Trapper Keepers? Yes, yes. And, of course, for us ladies, our, our Lisa Frank notebooks with the unicorns and the butterflies all over them. Did you have a Hello Kitty lunchbox? Hello Kitty was not really a thing when I was a little kid. <laughs> what was it? Oh, Jem. Jem. You love Jem. Totally outrageous. We Is love it, Jem. They're having a movie with that, right? I don't want to talk about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll try to find out more about that during the break, but we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna take just a quick break, and when we return, we'll talk to Faye Morrow from the Volunteer Center. Take a look at our community calendar for events around town, and don't go away. We'll be right back. Taught him how to hit a baseball. Just like that. Set How to hit a receiver. Nice. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. Taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Welcome back. We're delighted to have on the program with us this week, Ms. Faye Morrow from Anne Arundel County Volunteer Center. Welcome, Faye. Oh, thank you. I'm delighted to be here. I appreciate the opportunity to bring people up to date about their volunteer center. Absolutely. And we should start out with a good definition of what the volunteer center is all about and, and what you do with your role there. Sure. Well, I'm the executive director of a small but mighty group of staff. We have about one and a half full-time positions. Uh, full-time equivalent positions and another one and a half unpaid volunteer positions. And the Volunteer Center is a connector. The primary uh, job that we do is to let people in our community know how they can make a difference through volunteering. So we have more than 350 organizations that list on our website 
and they are offering all kinds of opportunities from working now with school starting, tutoring and mentoring youth, working with seniors, uh, doing environmental work, which is, is a big, uh, big effort here in Anne Arundel County, helping to feed the hungry, clothe uh, folks, doing whatever needs to be done to make this an even better place to live, work and play. And, and you do do a very good job of, you know, nobody can say if they, they went to you that they didn't find something that they could do. So you, there's plenty of opportunities to, of things to do. And uh, we have a, a big day coming up. Uh, we're almost to the end of uh, uh, August and in September for um, September 11th Remembrance. Um, tell us about some of the things sure. you have planned for that. Well, thank you for the chance to tell folks that even though we are small, we do have maybe seven different uh, volunteer projects that we manage throughout the year. And the big one is our 9-11 Day of Service and Remembrance. Coming up this year on Saturday, September the 12th, we'll have about 200 volunteers who will start the day off with a, a short uh, commemoration ceremony at the Maryland World War II Memorial, which is in the median overlooking the Severn River on Ritchie Highway 450, whatever you want to call that road. Right. <laughs> And then uh, the volunteers will get all their tasks assigned and they will be working from the Maryland World War II Memorial all the way down to Jonas Green Park and then ending with a lot of environmental uh, cleanup and planting and mulching and weeding and you name it at Jonas Green. So it'll be it's all a on great September day. 12th. All on September the 12th starting with a volunteer sign in at 8, the ceremony from 8.30 to 9.00. And then from 9 till 12, uh, all of the volunteer work will happen. And it, it's an amazing day. We, this is our sixth year. So it's, it's a great time to get the park ready for, uh, for the fall. Also, we're part of the International Coastal Cleanup Initiative. So we're helping to pick up trash and counting the trash so that we can talk about what goes into our rivers and bays and see if we can do something about keeping them clean and help people to understand why it's so important. I like that initiative. And even though it's a couple weeks away, folks, you can sign up now. You can register now for this event. How do people do that? They go to the Volunteer Center's website, which is www.aacvc. Dot org. Look at the calendar of opportunities on our front page and click on the, uh, the little blurb for September the 12th and they can sign up right there. Well, sounds like a great event and of course if you are available that day you should make sure that you can get out and volunteer. Faye, thank you so much for joining us on the program this week and uh, please come back anytime. Thank you. And don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Week in Review right after this. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Welcome back. The Redskins and Ravens are not the only football players sweating it out at training camp these days. Hundreds of student athletes are also going through the paces. We visited camp for the best in our county, Old Mill High School. Michelle Corkdale has more. Michelle? I am excited to be here with um, the start of the football season fast approaching with Old Mill High School Patriots today. 
They saw they had a spectacular season last year, uh, running 11 and three, losing a very close game to Montgomery County at the close of the season for the state champions. And in 2009 was the last time they took it. They're hoping to be able to secure that elusive state championship this year. And I'm excited to be here today with head coach Chad McCormick and his senior quarterback, David, Mc, uh, David Morocco. Thank you so much for joining us today. Tell us, Coach, what are you looking forward to in this season's football? Uh, just yeah. first to talk about just something, something you missed. We also won in 2011. We'll make sure those guys that um, did that get credit as well. Um, so. Looking forward, you know, to a fresh start. We have um, some experienced guys coming back with some new guys moving up from JV, some guys moving in from different schools or out of area. So just obviously, you know, going through the preseason, getting very excited to get to our first game against Severna Park. That's awesome. Now, last year, your linebackers and quarterback were your strengths. What are you looking for as keys to success this season? I, I think one strength we should have this year, you know, obviously David's back, and we're, we're looking for him to do a great job. We have a, a solid receiving core again. And then last year, we were really inexperienced on both the offensive and defensive lines. And a lot of those guys grew up a lot. Some played 14 games last year. So we have a lot, we have a lot more experience coming back on the lines, which I think is going to help us this year. That's exciting. And David, you're now in the position of senior quarterback. Um, what are you looking for in ways of support of your team this season? Um, the O-line. I trust the O-line. And from we have three returning starters. And I have trust with them. And I'm getting trust with the new guys. So I'm looking forward to everything, I guess. Now, I know that off-season is just as important as um, practice during the preseason. What have you been doing to condition and get yourself ready for the season? We have uh, summer workouts all summer long. We start in March, as soon as uh, spring sports start. So we've been um, three days a week. We've been in the weight room, out, outside on the grass, running sprints, grinding really hard, getting ready for the season. That's awesome. And do you have any aspirations in football after, um, after you graduate this year? Yeah, I would uh, definitely like to play college ball somewhere, football. Do you have a favorite team that you follow in the college ranks? Um, I guess favorite uh, college team is probably Florida Gators. They are a great team indeed. So, Coach, any last uh, words you'd like to share about the upcoming season? No, we're, we're just really excited. You know, we're looking for support from our community. Um, as you mentioned earlier when we were just talking, we have a great feeder system. OMYA is doing fantastic things in our community as well. We're looking for a lot of fans to come out here week one when we play Sverna Park, and we're really excited to get to there. That's right. So on September 4th is going to be here at home against Severna Park, which is one of our top teams in the county, correct? Yeah, they, they've been a pretty strong team year in and year out. There you have it, live from Old Mill High School's training camp. Back to you. Thanks, Michelle. We want to wish the Old Mill Patriots and all of our high school football teams the best of luck on a successful and healthy season. And, of course, go, go Seahawks. Seahawks. Go Seahawks. How are the Seahawks <laughs> going to be this year, you think? Um, they're going to be amazing. And, of course, we're talking about the South River Seahawks, South River not Seah the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle who? Just in case anybody got confused. South River Seahawks. That's my alma mater. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Well, Kristen, I think, you know, before we go, that we should talk about, we should do a retrospective on crabs this summer. Crabs this summer. I've only yes. had them once. I got exactly. them over the bridge at the VFW on Eastern Shore. Um, where was you it? You left at? Anne Arundel County to get crabs. I know. I'm sorry. I'm a bad person. It's a kind, it's a tradition thing in my family. It's um, in Stevensville. Your family traditionally leaves Anne Arundel County to get crabs? We used to get them off Davidsville Road, and that guy's not there anymore. Oh. So we had to find a new guy. Okay, so I'm wondering if the fact that you only got crabs once this year is because you didn't have time or whatever, or um, was it because the crabs are no good this year? They're, they've There's been no crabs, than normal. and they're not that good. Right. I right. went out last night with some friends, and we got you know, the all you can eat crabs. Yeah. And they were teeny tiny and they were super light and it was very disappointing. So I did a little bit of research. Okay, hit me. Okay, so I called up the Department of Natural Resources mm -hmm. and, and they gave me a few little pointers. I have a good friend that works there. Shout out to Jenny. Go ahead. Okay, Johnny. Jenny. Jenny. Jenny and Johnny. Jenny's my BF. Shout out. Best okay. friend forever. Yeah, so I guess it's a couple of things. One, okay. some, some are uh, long-term sort of things and some are seasonal. So one is, of course, the health of the bay. 
Of course. You know, you have development going on. You have, you know, barriers to the crabs being successful. Sure. Um, But the one I didn't know about is it is too cold. It was too cold this summer. Too cold. We had a lot of nasty rain. I asked about the rain, and the rain is a factor. But but um, I was told by DNR that the that that crabs are tropical. We did have a lot of I low did not temps. know, and so they don't they don't do really well when the water's too cold. So apparently that was part of the issue. And I swear, when I go out on the water with my neighbor, shout out to Scott Fox. Shout outs all over the best place crabber in Anne Arundel County. Thanks, Scott. Send him my way too. <sighs> no, no. He's not going down to South County, and he's not going to Baltimore. Okay. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, Scott could tell you that, you know, he's been out on his boat, and, you know, when I moved there five years ago, we were chowing down on crabs every single weekend. And now it's like, I mean, we're getting into this, the real heat of the season now. Right. Where, you know, up through September, I believe, you're still What is it? It's go. the burrs? The the burr months? Or burrs? Months like, like burrs are what you have with the it? crabs. No. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Months with a, with an R, right? They say that's when it's a good time to have. Err. Oh, okay. Err. Yeah. Burrs. November, September, October. Oh, interesting. I believe. Kristen. I think it's the letter R. What other mnemonic devices do you have for us today? Um, Thirty days past September, April, June, and November. The rest I'll have oh. thirty-one, except February, which is lots of fun. Which it's not really, but that just helped me remember it. Good one. Yeah. Well, I, I really hope that and my very excellent mother just served us nine pizzas. Only Pluto's not a planet anymore, so we can't say pizzas. But back when I was a kid, sorry, go ahead. Whoa. <laughs> I'm just folks, I'm just trying to keep up because I don't I don't know what's going on right now. I thought we were talking about crabs and all of a you sudden asked for there's all these pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> I I I, I, don't, I don't get it. Sorry. Um, but you know, hopefully next summer we'll have a better crop of well, crabs and maybe this maybe with a few weeks left in the season we'll we get could have some some excellent crabs. A, a I did crop. hear um, that the almanac which I've always looked to for my winter advice is saying we're going to have a horrific winter. They always say that. No they don't. They don't. They always say that. So what's a horrific winter? Are we going to have snowmageddon again? Apparently because we had such a mild one this past year that and because of all the rainfall during the summer. That's why I said rain when you were starting your, your crab talk, because I knew that that's why we're going to have a bad winter, according to the almanac. Farmers don't lie, y'all. Well, you know what else doesn't lie? The tape doesn't lie. Tape so we're going to we're gonna play this back in February, and we're going to see how, see how the almanac goes. did, because right, right, I think course. the almanac just likes to, I don't know. Well, it was great having really Faye on the program today. Yes. And uh, that's definitely, everyone should be out for National Service Day. There was one little thing that we forgot to mention during the interview. That is correct. Our OEM director will be the keynote speaker at the event. And so. if you've never heard him speak before, he is fantastic. Yes, absolutely. And um, and by the way, uh, emergency management will also be holding a fair that same day at Marley Station Mall. The Preparedness Expo. Preparedness Expo. Which so is where can, I'll be. You can get your, you know, your free kit, you know, that you take home with you so you can survive anything and all that good stuff. And I'll be there with free pencils and water bottles, which don't really help. Well, maybe. And here's a here's one more public service announcement before we go. Okay. Don't put Kristen's water bottles in the dishwasher. No, they're made from recycled plastic. They'll melt on you. Yeah, that Sorry. happened. That happened to me. That was embarrassing. But thank you, Faye, for coming out today, and everyone should go out to that event. Absolutely. Well, that wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode and archive episodes online anytime on Facebook, YouTube, or Google Plus by searching Arundel TV. Please tune in again next week for more highlights and news from around the county, and we'll see you next time. If you store your guns properly. So not just anyone can get to them. I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. I won't have to tell so many family members. I'm sorry. I won't hear as many scary stories or scary news reports. I won't have to hold someone's hand and shout you're going to make it. And I won't have to tell my kids this isn't a drill. Please. 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 Do it for us. For us. Do it for us.
Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. If you own a firearm and are not using it, please be responsible and be sure that it's stored in a safe place. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org.